under emperors and communists, in war and in peace, Chinese crime lords have operated as shadow governments with their own laws and their own severe forms of punishment. Ever wondered what your life would have been like if you were part of a gang or even mafia? Well, you're not alone. Every one of us have once thought about it. But today, we're going to take you inside the life of a Chinese triad mafia member. Get comfortable and make sure to stay till the end of the video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe so that you won't miss more videos like this. Getting back to the topic of what do you think happens when a person joins a mafia? Comment down below and let us know. The Triad a triad is a transnational organized criminal group with headquarters in Greater China and outposts in other nations with sizable populations of Chinese immigrants living abroad. The Hong Kong triad is separate from the criminal networks on the Chinese mainland. The triad was one of three significant secret organizations in prehistoric China. It opened branches in Chinese communities abroad, including Macau, Hong Kong, Taiwan and Taiwan. There are two primary categories of mainland Chinese criminal organizations. Dark forces, loosely structured gangs sometimes known as evil forces, and black societies, more mature criminal organizations. The degree to which the organization is able to control local markets and the amount of police protection that may be attained are two characteristics that set a black society apart from ordinary dark forces or low-level criminal gangs. In comparison to their British colonists, the Hong Kong triads have a great impact on Chinese history. Originally founded as a nationalistic patriotic society, they vowed to expel the Manchu invaders from China in the 1600s. Their legacy dates back to the 17th century. The crime gang has its fingers in almost every sector of society, including social, political and economic life. They were also essential in Sun Yat-sen and Chiang Kai-shek becoming Chinese presidents. With organizations operating under the slogan, Oppose the Qing Dynasty and Restore Ming, Chinese triads were involved in revolutionary and covert actions at the turn of the 19th century in an effort to overthrow the corrupt and ill king who was believed to be incapable of reform. During the Qing Dynasty, secret societies were linked with patriotism in order to kill political rivals and assault political adversaries. During the Republican era of China, the Kuomintang Tang or Nationalist Party allegedly recruited triads. Notable organizations included the Green Gang, which participated in the Shanghai Massacre of Communist Party members in 1927. Triads are organized using numerical codes to establish status and position inside the gang. Because these numbers are influenced by Chinese numerology, they have significant cultural importance. The leader of a triad, or the Mountain Dragon Master Head, is counted at 489, while the Deputy Mountain Master comes in at 438. The Mountain Master's stand-in or the Straw Sandal is numbered at 432. The Incense Master and the Vanguard, also known as 438, are placed behind these high-ranking persons and are in control of all initiation rites. Legend has it that the Vanguard's word is law. Law enforcement and intelligence agencies claim that the Vanguard may really have the most power. For example, they may possibly declare that a soldier or rank-and-file member is 49 and that a military leader, sometimes known as the Red Pole, is in charge of 426. Between units, the Straw Sandal 432 serves as a link, while the White Paper Fan 415 provides commercial and financial support. A frequent slang name for an informant who works as a covert law enforcement agent or spy in Hong Kong is 25. The majority of Chinese secret societies, including the Triads and some of the remaining Qing Gong, moved to Southeast Asia and other countries, particularly the United States, during the Strike Hard campaigns against organized crime in 1978. This was done to compete with the Tong and other ethnic Chinese criminal organizations after the People's Republic of China was established in 1949. Mei Zedong and Dan Xiaoping's campaigns against secret organizations in mainland China crushed them. If you like this video, please do subscribe and like to never miss our regular uploads. If this all seems strange to you, you must be amazed by their initiation rituals, which are typically performed on an altar decorated with incense and animal sacrifice. The candidate must consume a mixture of wine and blood in order to join the triad, either their own blood or the blood of the animal they sacrificed, or both are acceptable sources, which is unsettling and creepy. Even with a gun to our heads, we wouldn't want to taste blood. 
They then walk beneath the sword arch while reciting the oaths of the triad. The initiate then burns the paper on which the oath were written as a sign of their dedication to the triad and to show how serious they are about joining the triad. One of the oaths that the candidates must agree to say is, I shall never betray my sworn brothers. If I accidentally caused one of my brothers to be arrested due to a misunderstanding, I must instantly free him. If I breach my pledge, I will be struck dead by five thunderbolts. Drugs, alcohol, the promise of street cred, and the idea that if they help the triad, the triad will have their backs, are used to seduce young men into trusting triad members. Once these teenagers become addicted to the triad offer, there is no turning back. This affected young men who fall into the categories of bullied and socially awkward boys from impoverished backgrounds with perfect prospects. Brotherhood and coolness is another tactic employed by the triad members. They like to visit schools and arbitrate minor playground conflicts, such as who took the other person's girlfriend, or to engage in episodic bullying. In these situations, violence was always the best option. Inside the life of a triad member. Number 1. Wan Kuk Khoi Now it's time to examine some of the notable and active members' lifestyles and backgrounds. Khoi Wan Kuk After serving as the 14K triad's previous leader in the Macau branch for more than 14 years, Wan Kuk Khoi, also known as Broken Tooth Khoi, was released from prison on December 1, 2012. Since then, he's reportedly been involved in illegal gaming enterprises in Myanmar, linked to the production of illegal drugs and transnational organized crime organizations, operating in and around the Golden Triangle, Southeast Asia, under the Global Magnitsky Act US sanctioned him in December 2020. Wan had a challenging upbringing, spending his formative years in the slums of Macau and trying to scrape out a living on the streets before joining the 14K. The advent of another gangster, Ung Wai, whom he began to work for accelerated his ascent and urged Wan to remove his employer, Mo Ding Ping, when Wan was standing in the 14K. Wan agreed to the task, which began a year-long turf war that came to an end when Ping had to flee Macau to avoid being charged for murder. However, as Wai grew fearful of Wan's well-known reputation, the tension between the two gangsters increased. In 1996 and 1997, a brutal turf war started when Xu Fong allied himself with a rival triad clan. An unsigned letter was sent to numerous local papers in 1997. He was earning $6 million a month from his licensed casinos. Knives and bullets had no sentiment. Wan was released from prison on December 1, 2012, and soon after that, in October 2017, he took part in the Macau Dragon Group's initial coin offering (ICO) of the cryptocurrency known as DragonCoin a business that runs hotels and casinos. Wan then went back to work in the casino junket industry. The ICO was developed alongside the local junket system to draw gamblers from mainland China to Macau. It is said that the ICO raised 320 million US dollars and is still in operation today. Warning: As of today, mentions of broken tooth koi are not permitted in the media, else bullets won't have any effect. If you like this video, please do subscribe and like to never miss our regular uploads. Number 2. John Willis John Willis, a US gangster John Willis, commonly known as Jongbak Guy, the White Devil in Cantonese. John has ties to the Chinese Mafia in New York and Boston. FBI agent Scott O'Donnell stated that he never came across a situation similar to Willis's claim that he was the only person of color involved in Chinese organized crime in the 1970s. His mother raised Willis in Dorchester. As a bouncer at a Boston bar frequented by Chinese criminals, Willis was forced to live alone when his mother unexpectedly passed away when he was 14 years old. John's father abandoned the family when he was just two years old. On behalf of the Vapeng Zhou, an infamous Chinese mobster, John Willis intervened in a fight. As a thank you gift, Willis was brought to the Pingon Chinese residence because he was broke and in need of a place to stay. Joe handed him a card with his contact information on it and told him to call if he ever needed anything. Numerous stories claim that Willis was afterwards adopted by a Chinese family associated with the gang. After being convicted of extortion and spending time in prison, Willis received a five-year term for selling heroin in 2000. After being freed from jail, Willis participated actively in drug trafficking and money laundering against the wishes of his Chinese criminal organization's peers. 
He established an oxycodone trafficking network that expanded from Florida to Massachusetts while he was detained. Willis was found guilty in August 2013 as a consequence of his involvement in the 4 million oxycodone drug ring. He received a 20-year jail sentence for money laundering and trafficking in illegal drugs. Willis will be freed on June 10, 2028 from Canaan USP, where he's now serving a sentence. So guys, this is it for today. We've arrived at the end of today's video. Let us know what you think of this ancient Chinese gang in the comments box below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.